Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the weekly show with Aditya. A half an hour show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. In association with Dusra dot net, the number one website. This is episode one two two on the ninth of October two thousand and nineteen. The host of this show, the People's Podcast Champion, welcomes you to another iconic episode. The India South Africa match starts. Tomorrow, after a good performance in the first match, irrespective of the results, how will the team, the visiting team, South Africa, respond to this situation? What can they do better so that they can be a force in the remaining two matches? They may have to reorder their batting lineup, which means seniors like Quinton De Kock. Faf Du Plessy will have to come up the order. Means that Faf Du Plessy has to come at number three, Bamuma at number four, and Quinton De Kock at number five. Though some may say that it leaves the rest of the batting vulnerable. Yes, it might do that, but then this is the gamble they have to take. And let's not get into this discussion that after the retirement of a few. Semi legends like Jack Callis or De Villiers or Amla, the team has weakened. We could talk this every time a few players retire. Now the question in the Indian team will be: What happens after legends like Kohli, Rahane, Pujara, Rohit Sharma retire? Are we going to say this term that the team is in transition? Well, I disagree because we have K L Rahul. Prithvi Shaw, Shubman Gill waiting to take the reins. Even for me, Rishab Pant is the best thing that is going to happen to the Indian team in the next ten years. So I have nothing to worry about when these four or five greats retire. Do we know why do we call Sachin Tendulkar a great player? Because he was nearly forced to carry the burden of the entire team because there was no one else. to take the responsibility in the first 7 years of tanulkar's career before dravid and ganguly came into the team it was all about him he had to single handedly carry the team forward and those who saw him in those 7 years were so awed by his performance that till now we see him as a great player and then The human beings we are, we enjoy giving monikers like gods to players. Though there is no need to give such monikers or labels, but still, since this label stuck with him, as we all understand that cricket is an individual game, but is made to look like a team game. No way is cricket a team game or will ever be. Unlike hockey, football, basketball, where, irrespective of who scores the goal or who doesn't, the team is the one which wins. In cricket, it is the player which gets the important first. So Rohit Sharma gets all the accolades because he was opening. So cricket has always been, will always be about individualism, but it is masked to look like a team game. And this was further accentuated by Tanulkar's performance in the first seven years because it was him versus the rest of the opposition team. The other ten players in the first seven years of Tanulkar's career. Had no contributions, and then this theory spread like wildfire that if Tendulkar gets out, the team is lost, and this became such a force that once Tendulkar used to get out, the other players used to go into depression or they used to feel we cannot do this now, and then we used to see the crowds leaving. But now it is not the case, or it hasn't been since. 2000 after 2000 tanukar found an able ally in juvraj kaif dravid ganguly tanukar lakshman then as these three grew older in terms of the sport 
the likes of Yuvraj, Dhoni, Kohli came and took over. So it was never the case of a one person army. This example is clear from two matches. Go back to the 1996 semi finals. No player contributed. Tanukar was on a rage. He was hitting those fours and sixes at will. But the moment he gets out, the entire team collapses. They go into this depression that we cannot do anything. The match is away from us. The crowd too adds to this misconception that Tanukar goes, the team goes. And then we know what happened in that match. Now go 15 years later, 2011 World Cup. Tanukar doesn't contribute. He gets out along with Sevak. But Gambhir, Yuvraj, Dhoni, Kohli and others contributed to the team's win. So in that case, you could call it a team win, of course. But still, these are isolated incidents. In both the cases, the opposition team was a good, formidable Sri Lankan team. But unlike the 1996 collapse, there was no collapse in 2011. It was also in the same country. It was Calcutta versus Bombay. Rest of the situation was the same. India was chasing 250 in 1996. Here they were chasing around 270. One could see the confidence, the way the batters batted. While it was complete chaos and nervousness in 1996, it was the exact opposite in 2011. And this is the biggest difference now. So for me, I don't have to worry about what happens once Kohli and his current contemporaries retire because we have enough people to take the team forward or the pseudo idea of a team forward and become legends in their own right. This habit of making gods out of humans, giving humans a divine element is a fatal flaw in human beings world around. And now if we call Kohli the greatest batter in the world, then from the hockey side, I would call Harman Preet Singh the greatest hockey player. We have already given this nomenclature to Dhyan Chand, but then we have moved on from the likes of Don Bradman. So why not move on from Dhyan Chand and give more importance to the current hockey players. So therefore, in terms of hockey skills, precision, there is no one better at this time in this team than Harman Preet Singh, followed by the captain Manpreet Singh and others. Unlike hockey and football, in cricket at most, only two individuals are actively involved in the game that is the batter and the bowler and to some extent the keeper the rest of them are basically sitting and waiting but in hockey each of the 11 players are important be it the defenders the midfielders the forward the keepers the coaching staff outside everybody is involved in the game and yet, by some bizarre thought process, we call cricket a great ambassador. This notion is ambiguous and misleading. But if you ask anyone who is your favorite player and they will say Virat Kohli as if they have been like small kids being tutored to say this. And then we take them so seriously as if there is no other player in the world than Virat Kohli or even if we go Beyond cricket, we are stuck with P.V. Sindhu, Saina Nehwal. If you ask me which sport do you prefer, my number one preference will be hockey. But then my opinion is as personal as Kohli saying that he takes inspiration from the likes of Federer and Nadal due to their work ethics involved in their particular sport. That is the gospel. There is no other bigger word than what Kohli says. So we give him the nomenclature of King Kohli, another falsified notion. But we are humans. We have to give such names to people. Otherwise, where is the fun? Where is the endorsement? And this is how the cookie crumbles. So for me, while the cricket team is good, the current hockey team, the current 15 players are the greatest of all times. Means for me, they go beyond the likes of Dhyanchand, Dilip Turkey, Dhanraj Pillay 
and others and whether they win future championships or secure gold in olympics that is not my criteria for labeling this team as great but in a country which is obsessed by cricket everybody sees cricket as a great place of commercial interest while hockey has to contend with one or two sponsors it doesn't get too many the hockey team has done well with minimum resources if i was to sponsor a team tomorrow and i had an option i would go for the hockey team first so to counter the 60 minutes of hockey or the 90 minutes of football they have come up with this t10 cricket means 10 overs but it's impractical to compare the 10 overs of cricket or the 20 overs of cricket overall to 90 minutes of football because in football there is action all around there is not one moment of dullness while even in the 10 overs we don't know if it actually goes for 90 minutes or because of those interruption it actually goes for the intended 2 hours unlike boxing wrestling and other sports there is no clock pressure on the players we do not see a countdown timer in cricket we can take as much as time as we want it doesn't really mean that despite the evolution of 10 over matches it will finish on time and while the purists can scratch their heads about the insult to the test cricket we understand that the 10 over matches are basically for entertainment for the players for the crowd on the other hand it is a shame that the hockey india league which would have cropped up new players is not being revived nobody is willing to put in money from outside sources other than the hockey india the sporting body while if the indian t20 league had gone through such financial troubles there is not a single individual a business person who wouldn't have stepped in to help the sport but when it comes to hockey for the last 2 years nothing has been done and it is a matter of shame i haven't read a single article in the newspaper from these pseudo experts calling for the revival of this iconic tournament even virat kohli who sees himself as a savior for other sport hasn't stepped in but that's a different matter but why hasn't the hockey india gone further to ask the government or the ministry that we want to revive this sport we want to have word with the various teams can you please help us can you please give us some kind of financial oxygen so that we can take into confidence the teams involved and revive this tournament but nothing nothing from the government which is a matter of shame though it's a gray area but yes it's a matter of shame why don't we have a supreme court appointed committee of administrators to look into this one bizarre answer would be that people don't enjoy hockey hockey is not on the radar of half the population of the country it's either football or the single sporting events so it basically means that the wait for the hockey india league to be revived to be restarted is going to be a long one and why did it end where well, there is only one reason why a certain tournament or a certain institution ends bankruptcy or financial issues it cannot be people's interest because that wavers and is not fixed so the fact that if we come with this excuse that people don't watch the sport it's a very juvenile excuse people's interest doesn't count this ends part 1 of this episode stay tuned for part 2India's only WWE expert welcomes you to the world of WWE and part 2 of this episode.
with both the brands Raw and SmackDown now on different networks, the world of WWE will go a tremendous change. For the last three years, if they have been preparing for brand supremacy, now the brand supremacy will really become one because it will be USA versus Fox. Roman Reigns continued his temporary and unusual alliance. This time it was with Daniel Bryan and it ended in another victory for him. So now the question is when he will be given a chance at a championship match and that has been eluding him for the past 10 months. And if one talks about championships, Brock Lesnar appearing on the SmackDown brand and to make the debut of this brand even more interesting and appealing to the fans. They even scheduled a Lesnar versus Kofi Kingston match, though the match ended so fast that one did not know what happened. But the WWE has a habit of springing up surprises and another surprise was the appearance of Kane Velasquez, Lesnar's former UFC nemesis and it seems that these two are up for a showdown in the next pay-per-view. Moving on to the pay-per-views, the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view was predictable at best but they still try to add the mystery involved in any pay-per-view. The Rollins vs Bray Wyatt match. It was expected to be a bloody and a no holds barred match and that is what it turned out to be. I won't go into the details of the match considering what exactly happened and the misconceptions of the idea of violence. I'll say that the match was bloody and no holds barred as the two competitors threw everything at each other literally and metaphorically to win the match. Though it was eventually won through a DQ, it will not be surprising if these two competitors spar up again at a later pay-per-view or in one of the brand's usual airing. The highlight of the week was of course The Rock appearing at the Friday Night Smackdown episode premiere as he is often credited with coining the term SmackDown. This ends part 2 of the episode. Stay tuned for part 3. Federal agencies around the world are looking to regulate the messenger services such as WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook because of their misuse by some individual to spread misinformation. It's not whether misinformation was not a tool used before such platforms were formed, but the fact that these platforms are now used at a mass scale and we believe what is being said in these platforms that Governments and agencies are concerned about their inability to track the messages and the origin of a few rumors and misinformation. Can we call this situation a grey area? Yes, we can in light of the Supreme Court's historic proclamation that privacy is a fundamental right. But we know that the Article 14 which talks about the Freedom of speech and expression also has a few restrictions and these agencies, especially in India, want to use that and are often found sparring with these messenger services that we need you to decrypt the information so that they can find out where the origin of the rumor was. Now let's go deep into this and try to understand the idea of rumor. Why is rumor spread? With the data protection laws and the privacy laws becoming such a rage in countries world over, the already thin line between national security and privacy seems to be diminishing further and further. Further. This is further accentuated by the Telegraph Act. The Indian Telegraph Act 
1885 states that on occurrence of any public emergency or in the interest of public safety the central government or a state government can take a temporary possession for as long as the public emergency exists or the interest of the public safety requires the taking of such action of any telegraph established maintained or worked by any person licensed under the act now this situation mirrors the video streaming services which are not regulated in terms of their content and by these video services i mean the likes of amazon hotstar netflix as their content has come under fire and this has been marked by a few fringe organizations who claim that the content on this may lead to further problems here the question of creativity of the makers of the film or tv versus what is suitable to watch for a certain age has become a very big argument and my only solution is you have the option of not watching it you can easily unsubscribe to that platform if you feel that the content is not suitable for people of certain ages one cannot take the age factor into consideration while impinging on the creative rights of the content creator just because there are self regulatory bodies such as the national broadcasters association for the electronic media the censor board for the films and the press council for the print media it doesn't mean that we need one for these services as well and even if we need let's leave it to the viewers to decide what to watch and what not to watch by putting in the ambit of regulation we are trying to say that individuals are not mature enough to understand the con- and this once again forms a very gray area there is no solution to this so in terms of the messenger services as well as these video services the regulation has to be from the side of the individuals means that if you see a message on such platforms and you feel that they are of a nature which may lead to further problems then you should not what we call forward it if you doubt the content of such messages then the best thing is to delete the message from your side and, and not further accentuate the problem or the problem that might happen it's not just about finding out who was the originator of these messages and penalizing them as per as the law it is also about stopping the messages if they have started from the source as smart individuals who know how to use such platforms if we can just delete the message ignore the message and if we don't believe the message blindly but do our own research as to whether this message makes sense because rumors spread because we do not use our cognitive side and we use our emotional side and then whatever happens is not just the fault of the originator but everyone involved in this chinese whisper one has to be judicious as to whether this message has any kind of good intentions if you feel that this message or this particular video has some kind of negative connotation then the best part is just to delete it from your device or if you are getting it through your verbal communication then don't spread it further because misinformation rumors and half truths are part of the human psychology and this has been in vogue ever since humans became a part of a community but the reason we talk about such things is because the medium of the platform which is being used to spread such messages it's our habit and our propensity to forward everything without thinking that such messages spread and it becomes even worse as the messages go further and further just like 
Chinese whisper. So it's up to the individuals to be judicious about this and not just leave it to the government and the government agencies. Because as I said in my last episode, Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram are not the first messenger services that have come. We had, as I said in my last episode, Google Talk, which has become Hangout. We had Yahoo Messenger. We had Orkut and other applications, but then no one used those services and in the frantic manner that we do now. And a few individuals decided to take advantage of such services and spread misinformation. One doesn't know, one will never know why is misinformation spread, what is the idea of fake news, what is the idea behind rumors. It's only up to us to stop it at a certain time. And if we can do that, then we can stop the actions that are taken by certain individuals after believing such messages without any thought, blindly. If they are being gullible about it, then why should we? <laughs> this ends episode number 122 on the 9th of October 2019. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will be back on Friday at the same place and the same time. Please send your valuable suggestions through your comments and audio recording to the email id aditya.writer at gmail.com. You can also like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and Facebook page and stay tuned for the next episode.